you you spoke about the rhythm. Yeah. And I remember that video vividly, vividly. You was always a fly dude. Like, like your, your fashion sensibilities was always ahead. You was wearing a suit in the rhythm. <laughs> Like, like, yeah, I, was, I was the worst with that. <laughs> yeah. What what sixteen year old like like where does that come? Because back in them days, it wasn't necessarily like rap was on the the extra fly thing. Like like yeah. it, you know it had evolved. So you was in 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 a lot of ways ahead of your time. Where does that whole fashion sensibility come from? Two two things. One one um, I believe in first impressions and order of appearances. That is a very, in business, in life, and everything, I believe in that. And the impression in 1989 and before that, the impression of a rapper was literally everything rappers become now. And the impression of a rapper was you're a drug dealer, you are without, and you're pretty much a menace. And I'm saying that because us in New York and we're just in our culture, we're in our culture. But when we step outside of our culture boundaries, you know what I'm saying? We walk down Fifth Avenue or we walk down Madison Avenue or or I'm in a random mall in Houston, Texas, in like Pearland, Texas, you know, like white area of Texas or somewhere or or Orange County or Beverly Hills in 1989, I am a menace. I am the worst thing on the planet. And my tool of trade is either selling drugs or rapping. And and like I said, nowadays that's what it is. And and it's a it's a badge of honor to be that. But when I was growing up, we were taught to not be that and to be better than what others may think of you. So the whole suit representation for me was, we can rock this too. And and we don't have to be, first of all, think about this. People got to really realize in 1989, mm-hmm. athletes, Hated rappers. Yep. Michael Jordan would never, never stand next to a rapper. But we rocking his Jordans over every day. Never. R and B artists hated rappers. Pop artists hated rappers. Radio stations hated, hated rappers. Rapper. Yep. Everybody hated us. So we it was our job to show the the different facets of black people yeah you had your gutter rappers you had your hippie rappers like de la soul you had like your fun and happy rappers like kid and play and then you know you had your nerd weirdos like me and we were showing we had your radical rappers like like um public enemy and we were showing the world that we're not a monolith we are multifaceted people and hip-hop is a multifaceted genre that can come at you from all different angles um you know brothers from the west coast bringing their gang culture and showing us what's happening over here and you know and it was it was like that and so for me rocking a suit was a representation of that but also another thing you know you know, my my inspiration, my like clothing inspiration was always people way before me, like jazz musicians and and even like, you know, everybody wanted to be a gangster, but I'm like, okay, but look how Al Capone and them dressed. They used to dress like this, they, you know, they had the suits and it was, you know, I'm watching movies like Untouchables and, and, yep. and, and I'm like, yo, these dudes is fly. I wanna be like that. If we gonna be on some gangster stuff, let me at least be like, old 1930 Chicago New York gangsters you know even even the real gangsters running around New York in 1989 the John Gotti's of the world yeah. they was fly they didn't come out 
you wouldn't, you know, it's funny, like you see movies and you see like the Italian dudes in the like little chain and the, the velour sweatsuit. Yep. That wasn't till later. When I was a kid, them dudes was walking around Armani down at all yes. times. Yes. And it was real in New York. Like, you know, people don't understand that gang culture was real. So I'm seeing all that from all angles. I'm like, yeah, I, I want to do that too. And, you know, that's basically what it was. You know, it's so interesting because I, I, I want to keep at the forefront of this conversation. When your first album dropped, you're 16. Yeah. So for you to have this type of awareness, uh, it, it, to me, because I'm thinking as you're talking, I'm thinking of Sean at 16. Mm -hmm. And I absolutely was not as aware as you were um, yeah. of how we were looked at just as, as human beings. But it, I, I remember with, with my own son and I would tell him, you know, when he was a teenager, a young man, yeah, you know, you're, you're six foot, one inch tall. You're a black man. This is how the world sees you. Yeah, It has nothing to do with you individually. They don't know that you're a great student. They don't know that you are raised by two parents. They don't know that you have great manners and you, but they see you yeah. with, with, with a lifetime of imagery that has been fed to them through media, um, through all of the things that they've seen in their life. So you have to carry yourself different. And, and, I, and I'm listening to you and I'm stunned that at your age, you're saying to yourself, I, I, I'm aware, and, and I'm going to take this upon myself to, to, to show a different side of who we are, not just as rappers, but African-American young men. I, I got to commend you on that. That's insane. But I got I to gotta throw that to my parents, though, to be honest with you, especially my mom. My mom was the first person whenever I would go out as a little kid, just hanging out. You know, back in the days when you kids, they your parents just let you go. <laughs> you just You could be out for... 10 hours a day and they don't know where you at. But my mother was like, when you are out, you represent me. And you never know who I know. That was her, her thing was, you never know who I know. And when you out in that street, anybody can see you and everybody that knows me knows that you're my kid. Mm -hmm. So don't be out there acting like an ass. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And on the flip side, like whenever I would do, whenever I would go out and my father or my mom's is looking for me, my neighborhood was so close knit. It would be like, like I remember one time I got in so much trouble. I told my pops I was going to get a comic book and this was 9.30 in the morning. So at three o'clock in the afternoon, <laughs> I'm, dry, I'm riding my <laughs> bike and every Every block that I hit, somebody comes outside. Your pop's looking for you. Your pop's looking for you. I'm like, shh. That, that is old school. That is yeah. so old school. Go ahead. Yo, and, and that never left me. So, so flash forward to being a rapper. And I remember vividly, I remember in 89 having a cell phone. And... um. First, it was the cell phone with the suitcase. Then it was the big old brick. Right. I had this brick. And I remember being back to Texas. I don't know why Texas, but I was in a mall in Texas. And I was on the phone with my mom asking her if she, like, I wanted to pick something up. I think it was like close to Mother's Day or something. And I, don't, I don't know. I was asking her something about Mother's Day. I remember this vividly. And these two white guys were behind me laughing. And it was like, there we go. The local pharmacist, the neighborhood, the neighborhood pharmacist. Brilliant. You know, and, and because he they literally saw me see my beeper, make a call. Mind you, I'm in a suit. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm in a suit with a flat top streak in his head, and I'm clearly looking like a 16-year-old kid. I'm not the tallest dude in the in the building. So I'm looking like a kid in a suit with a flat top, with a big old phone, bigger than his head, and a beeper. But their judgment of me yep. never left me. 
It never left me. And I, I could easily turn around and say, motherfucker, I make money. Like, I, don't, I ain't, you know, I'm not that dude. So that made me see that even in a suit, even in, in a suit probably more expensive than anything they have on or anything in Macy's, I am still being judged and prejudged for something that I'm not. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.